Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I finally want to sit down and build my future fourth generation Toyota Tacoma. If you're new to the channel, I sold my third gen Tacoma about a year or so ago in preparation for the fourth generation Tacoma. I've been able to see it. I've even been able to drive it and check it out. I really like the updates that they've made to it. I made a whole video comparing the third gen to the fourth gen. So if you want to see the differences, take a look at that separate video. But now it's time to sit down with the Toyota Configurator and see which trim level I want to go with. I sold my 2017 TRD off-road. Before that, I had a, an XSP, which they don't make anymore. But I had a TRD off-road and I was contemplating getting an off-road or going with a Pro. Maybe I could even go with a lower trim level, maybe a Sport or an SR5. I want to do a lot of modifications to this truck. I want to build it. So I don't want to go with the Trail Hunter. I probably don't want to go with the Pro, but we have six that we can configure. The Trail Hunter and the Pro are still not available because those are getting the hybrid engines, which are not rolling out until later in 2024. So let's start off with the SR. This truck starts at $31,500. Very interesting to see because my 2017 TRD off-road started about at the same price, maybe a little bit higher than that. So if we start with the SR, you can get two different options here. We have a double cab with a five foot bed or the extra cab with the six foot bed. Now I'm going to go with the double cab because I like the usable space of having a little bit extra backseat room. And I don't want a six foot bed because I like to off-road. Shorter bed is better for the departure angles in off-roading. And with the six years, actually even more, I had a second gen two for nine years. So with the total years between those trucks, both having the shorter bed, I never had any issues with not being able to fit everything that I use my truck for. Now with the SR, you have three of the same engines here, but with different options. You get four wheel drive, you get rear wheel drive, which is just two wheel drive, or you can get four wheel drive with the six speed manual. Now it's pretty cool to see that the manual actually has more horsepower. So 270 and 310 versus 228 and 243. I've been able to drive the third gen manual and while I think it is cool, I love manuals. The Tacoma, I just wanna stick with the auto. So I'm just going to go with the automatic for there. Hopefully I can drive a manual at some point. They're just not as common or as popular to be able to get your hands on unless you special order one like this. Now, as we get to the packages for this, there's a lot that you can configure with all of these different trim levels. A lot of this you don't even have to add. We have mud guards, which I would just end up ripping off off-road anyway. There's deck rail and cleats. Now we actually sell those for the Tacomas. You can check out our website, brosforspeed.com. I will be installing those on my fourth gen as well, so I don't need to add them. They are a lot more heavy, heavy duty than what Toyota does give you. But what I am interested in is I wanna keep the smart key option like I had on my third gen. And so we have four different packages here to go through. From what I've been able to tell just messing around with this, it looks like every package just adds an additional item to that package. So the SR upgrade package starts at 1500 and by adding things to it, you get all the way up to 1630. So if we go to this package here, you get the deck rail system with the tie downs and all of that, which I will be adding. Like I just mentioned, you get the blind spot front and rear parking assist with automatic braking, LED headlights or bed lights as well, the rails and the cleats. And if you just go to the basic one, this gives you the blind spot, the parking, it doesn't give you the cleats and everything like that. So like I said, it kind of adds everything up together. I would probably just pick this first one here for 1500. I really wouldn't want the blind spot monitor because I ripped my rear bumper off of my third gen, which if I had them, I would have had to replace the whole thing. But it looks like if you want the smart key, you have to at least start there. So let's add that to this truck. And then for all of these different accessories, there's really nothing I would personally add from Toyota. A lot of this you either have like a phone cable or you can do later. A lot of the PPF I will be doing at some point. And so I'm not going to add any of those features, bringing the grand total to this SR model to $40,320. My 2017 TRD off-road, brand new. I paid $34,000 for that. So let's move on now to an SR5. This starts at $36,200. So by clicking on that, looks like we have a double cab with a five foot, double cab with a six foot, or the extra cab with the six foot. 
I'm going double cab five foot. As you can tell, that is the sizing of the truck that I like. We have four wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Now, personally, I would never buy a pickup truck with two wheel drive. If you're buying a pickup truck, at least in my opinion, it should have four wheel drive, but that is for a separate discussion. And I'm just sticking with the colors that it defaults to. I am still unsure on what color I wanna go with. I had a blazing blue Tacoma. They don't make blazing blue anymore. That was going to be my first choice. And so I need to figure out some color themes that I wanna do for this next truck. Now for the SR5, it looks like we have a little bit less options here for the packages. We have the same mud guards. We have the SR5 upgrade package, which looks to include leather trim seats with the shift knob. You get some garage door buttons, wireless charging, automatic climates your front and rear parking assist, LED bed lights, easy lower tailgate, and the integrated trailer braking control. So that looks like what I would want. You get the smart key in that as well. Then you can also upgrade a few different packages and including the cold weather package. The cold weather package includes heated seats and then everything else looks to be the same. I'm not sure if I want heated seats. I never had them in my other truck, I don't really need them if I'm getting cloth seats or the, the leather, the soft hex leather. I really don't even use them in my R8, which has leather heated seats as well. So that's something that I may pass on. And it looks like maybe I could just do the entry level package and just get all of that. So we've added that. And now to accessories, again, I'm going to skip all of this. There's really nothing in here that I would want to add. Bringing our grand total to less than the SR, which is interesting to see. We're at 39,625, so slightly less expensive. I'm not sure with the package that the SR had, what I'm missing for this one, but that is definitely interesting to see. So let's look at the TRD pre-runner. This is something that I'm not going to choose, but I think it's really cool that Toyota has brought this back. This has been a trim level that's been absent from the lineup for quite some time. You only have one option. You get the extra cab with the six foot bed. So there's really no back seats in this. It's just for extra storage. If you're just looking for more of a work truck, you have a lot of tools that you'll be putting in the back. You don't need a full four door. This is going to be perfect for that buyer who just is using it for work purposes. And it's mainly you and maybe one other person. So we have rear wheel drive. It's a two wheel drive truck. We only have the automatic transmission. Looks like there were a few other colors to add. And then real basic, we have even less options for this. If we go to the highest upgrade package, you get the mud guards, you get the garage door buttons, wireless charging, pretty much everything in this TRD or this upgrade package looks like it's been the same so far. So even if I add that and we have a fully specced pre-runner without any of those options, we're still right around $40,985. So of the three so far, it's interesting that they are all going to cost about the same. And of course that's going to depend on if you do that higher package for the upgrade or you just go with a very, very basic truck. Now the next one I am intrigued in, this is the TRD Sport. And so when we go to the TRD Sport and we build this, you'll notice too that the suspensions are going to be different. I covered that in a separate video, but when you go into some of these, you'll notice that the suspension components and some other things are going to start getting a little bit different as far as either having the rear leafs or going with a real rear coil spring system, which is new for the Tacoma. Now I'm going to stick with the double cab five foot. We have the same three options that we first saw with the SR. I'm going to stick with four wheel drive here. Now we're starting to see a few other color options here that we can click on as well as the interior colors, which you can change. So of course that's just depends on your preference. And for these packages here, this is where you're going to start seeing a few different upgrades that we haven't seen just yet. So I would say the first three are going to be more of your basic truck. And then now we're starting to get into a little bit more of the luxury side for the Tacoma here where heated front seats is now a standalone option. So if I wanted to add those, I could do that. Looks like we have another package with the heated front seats. And now we're going to start being able to get into the larger infotainment system and some other goodies. So we have a lot to go through. 
I'm gonna go straight up to this sport premium package that's almost $9,000. I'm not adding it, I just wanna see what you are spending almost 10 grand for. You get the soft text heated seats, eight way power, you get the larger infotainment system, so it's 14 inches, panoramic, oh, the 360 camera system, okay. JBL, I thought it meant panoramic sunroof. I would totally get that. We have the JBL speaker with that flexible speaker moonroof. So I wonder if a moonroof is their terminology for just a sunroof or it's going all the way back. I think it's just a standard uh, sunroof. Wireless charging, dual zone that you can get. We have the AC power inverter, so that is located in the bed. Digital rear view mirror. You have your towing package as well. That's something that I would like to see too. Can you buy a Tacoma without the factory hitch? And the reason that I'm curious about that is because the factory hitch is now welded as part of the frame if you get the towing package. So you can't do a high clearance rear bumper because even if you did, you can't change the location of the hitch. But also at the same time, if you get a Tacoma without the towing package, how many people are gonna buy a truck that can tow but can't because you don't have the hitch? But if you put an aftermarket bumper with a hitch, I don't know, it's interesting to see. Let's try to go with something maybe a little bit more reasonable. Let's see what the base one is. So you get the 14 inch screen and it looks like that's it. So obviously there's a lot of different options in here that I would really have to dive into to see what works the best for me and what I want of course and what I don't need. Uh, let's try this one here where we have the power seats, they're heated, we have the speaker charging. Honestly, I would probably add this one. We have the trailer brake control, so I would assume that means that we do get the towing package and possibly going one down, maybe there's no towing package for it. So that's something that I would just have to further see, talk to my dealer when the time comes. No accessories here. We jumped up almost 10 grand for this TRD Sport. Not to say that's still not a lot, but when I paid 34 for my off-road, this is still uh, getting to quite a bit of money. I'm still going to buy one, but so far, maybe I could go with a Sport. Maybe I could get away with doing the Sport instead of the off-road, because the main difference between the Sport and the off-road is going to be the suspension. And that's something I'm going to be putting in a new one anyway, lifting the truck and doing things like that. But now let's get to what I really want TRD off-road. So let's see how comparable I can get this to my 2017. Sticking with the same bed there. I'm going four wheel drive with the automatic. Still not sure on the colors there, but now let's take a look at these packages. So we have the heated seats. It looks like we're going to have some of the same items, but this is now where we can get into the stabilizer disconnect. So this is going to be basically like your front independent suspension where you can do the stabilizer or the sway bar disconnect. And so that is something that I truly want because my Tacoma did great off-road, but being an independent front suspension, having that sway bar disconnect, that definitely helps improve off-roading with an independent front, front suspension. And so let's just go all the way up to the highest package to see what this one is, $10,000. So you are getting the seats, that we've already seen, the larger screen, multi-terrain monitor, which I assume is the crawl control, which I had on my truck. I didn't use it hardly ever. I used it mainly for video, so I don't think I wanna go that route again. It was just easier to use four-wheel drive and some of the other tech. Looks like you have towing, you have the power tailgate, along with a power rear window, which is a must. So I really wanna have the power rear window. Doing it yourself, it's just so much easier to push a button for that. So let's go all the way back down. Let's do something a little bit more reasonable. Let's add, let's do the first upgrade for this, where you get the seats, speaker. Okay, I'm gonna have to go up a little bit from this one. I need to find which one has the stabilizer, unless you can just add it as a standalone option. I think you can just do it as a standalone option. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I really don't want the uh, mud guards and I don't know if I want a moonroof or not. So that kind of puts me in between both of these packages just over five grand. It looks like they all come with the larger 14 inch screen and we have the trailer, power rear window. Let's go ahead and add this one for 53. 
but I also want to look at the one for 54. And so this has the addition of the moon roof now, and I think that's the only difference. So honestly, that one might be the package that I would go with. It's $100, $200 more to get the uh, moon roof added. But with the TRD off-road upgrade, anything different? I don't see anything that's different. So this is where it kind of gets a little... Okay, there's the stabilizer disconnect. So that is the entry level with that. <laughs> so let's add that, let's remove the other one, and then let's remove the standalone option. So after looking at these in greater details, it looks like if I went with this TRD upgrade package for $5,800, that gives me the stabilizer disconnect, as well as some other things that I may or may not want. The AC power inverter in the bed, I used once in my Tacoma. So. For that one time, it probably paid for itself, but it looks like I'm going to go with that, and that's the cheapest package that I can get that has that, but also has a few other things that I might possibly want without going overboard. So I just sold my 2017 Tacoma I paid 34 grand for, and I'm going to buy a new one for $50,000. I'm gonna play around with it, of course, until I start to actually put in my allocation and my spot for one, but it looks like I'm going to be spending about 50 grand for this newer truck. Now, you know, with like everything else, prices have drastically increased, so I'm not surprised by that. But at the same time too, the truck does have a lot more technology, a lot more in it that the third gen did not have, which is awesome to see for the brand, just how it's growing. Let's just look at a limited just for fun. My main reason with not getting a limited is this is the only model that has Chrome available on it. I am not a chrome type of person, but let's just build one to see what you get. So double cab five foot looks like is the only option. Four wheel drive is the only option. You have a few more colors here that have popped up as well. That is your only package, adding mud guards if you want it, and then everything else as you saw here. So that one was pretty easy. 53 grand, you just get a basic truck with the chrome. You get a lot of chrome. Wow, it's on the mirrors too. Uh, so. If if you're looking for Chrome and you don't want to build your truck, you can go with a Limited. Now, if we just look at the last two really quick, you can't actually build them yet because there's no pricing, there's nothing else aside from what these vehicles are going to have. If you're buying the Trail Hunter and the Pro, I hope you're just buying it as is because with the Old Man Emu suspension, the Fox suspension, isodynamic seats for the Pro, you're not really going to want to rip any of those things out. And I want to build my truck. I want to do parts to it. So that automatically eliminates those two. While the isodynamic seats would be cool, maybe I can put those in my truck at some point. So after we have built six Toyota Tacomas, which one do you guys think I should go with? I think I have to replace my TRD off-road with another TRD off-road. The SR and the SR5 though are very intriguing, but for, you know, $40,000, another 10 grand, is still another 10 grand, don't get me wrong, but if I'm spending 40 grand on a truck, spending a little bit more to get some of the features that I really want is probably the best idea to go. I don't wanna regret spending 40 grand on a truck just because it was 40 grand and it was more of the entry level pickup for the Tacoma. But don't get me wrong, they're great options. I think one of these would be a fantastic build. Maybe I could do an aftermarket sway bar disconnect or some kind of system like that and install it to show everyone that you can do it. You don't have to have one on the TRD Pro, maybe hook up some compressors and maybe show that. What do you guys think? Should I just do that? Start off with a base truck and put everything in it that I can to get it to outperform a TRD off-road. That is something too, because 10 grand that I save not going with the off-road can go towards more modifications to what I'll say probably the SR5. So I have a lot more thinking to do. I will let you guys know obviously what I decide as I get closer to the actual build and putting in the allocation for my truck. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Building the Tacoma, this is my first time actually sitting down and going through it. A little bit confusing on some of the packages. Uh, we haven't really had any options like that in the past. It was kind of pick your model, pick a handful of options and go from there. So we have a lot of options for all of these trucks minus the limited and you can pick the trim level that's going to best suit you. Engine, transmission, cab size, bed size. We have a lot of options for the fourth generation Toyota Tacoma. 
I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you can follow along with my next gen Tacoma as well as our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.